Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dan Kearney here, and welcome back to the Overwatch League Roundup. Playoffs Week 2 Results. So, remember when we started these playoffs and I said I didn't expect any sweeps during these playoffs, and then everyone would take at least one map off of everyone else? Well, yeah, then this week happened. Let's take a look at the results from this week and find out who will be going to our Grand Final in Philadelphia to fight it out for the ultimate crown of Overwatch League Champions 2019. Strap yourselves in because this one might be a long one and I'm going to go quite quickly as there is a lot to get through. We start off in the losers bracket as we have some teams we need to whittle down before we get to the winners bracket final a bit later on. Our first game was the Atlanta Reign taking on the Hangzhou Spark. I found that this one was very hard to predict as the Atlanta Reign had looked good, looked good all through stage 4 and during the playoffs, but the Hangzhou Spark had really stepped up, stepped up during these playoffs and these two teams found themselves very closely matched. We started out on Busan and this match would go quite convincingly in favour of the Spark, with them finding more value with their DPS lineup compared to the Reign. The reactionary style of the Spark was really paying off here. The common thing with Hangzhou is that Bazzi will always be the second one to punch when it comes to the Doomfist on the enemy team. Much like during Dive, the Spark are a team to counterpunch rather than initiate themselves. Hangzhou take the map 2-0 and we move on to Numbani. In their first attack round on Numbani, the Spark do manage to finish the map, but they have to do it in overtime, giving the Atlanta Reign something to aim for. The Atlanta Reign do finish their attack round, but again, it is in overtime, proving that these two teams are very evenly matched. Extra rounds time and it come, out comes the pirate ship for Hangzhou Spark and boy did that prove fruitful. They managed to complete the map for a second time with only one minute in the time bank. The pressure is really on the rain now and with only one minute they do manage to get the payload moving but fail to get to point B. The Hangzhou Spark go up 2-0 in the series. We go to Temple of Anubis and could the Atlanta Reign find some traction and get themselves back in the series? Well, the Hangzhou Spark come out all guns blazing com completing Anubis with 4.43 remaining. The Atlanta Reign really need this map and the pressure is all on them at this point. They do manage to finish the map but their time bank was vastly inferior with only 1 minute and 2 seconds compared to the vast time bank that Spark have. The Reign need something on their second attack but they fail to get any progress on the first point. An intense last fight does see the Spark get the first point on Temple of Anubis as they go to match point in the series. It's make or break for the Atlanta Reign as we go to watch point Gibraltar. A must win for Baby Bay and Co. The Spark would attack first, they would complete the map with 129 in the time bank, things looking desperate for the rain. The rain do manage to complete the map, but it is in overtime, meaning that they will have a minute and a half less on their clock compared to the Spark. In the second attack round, the Spark stopped the rain just before capturing point A. The next round of the playoffs were in sight for the Spark. With two and a half minutes on the clock, the job was always going to be very difficult for the rain, and they unfortunately couldn't prevent the spark from taking the map and the series in a convincing 4-0 fashion, something that I never would have predicted before the match. The defensive style worked really well for the spark here. They really had the number of the rain and did a very good job of shutting them down. There is nothing to be ashamed of for the rain though as they had it all to do after stage 3, so to be in the playoffs and to put up a great show like they have done is testament to them. The future is looking bright for the rain, a 4-0 sweep certainly doesn't do them justice. Now we move on to our second match of the losers bracket where we find the LA Gladiators taking on the San Francisco Shock. The LA Gladiators have looked fairly good throughout these playoffs losing narrowly to the Vancouver Titans to find themselves in the losers bracket after knocking the spark down to the losers bracket in the quarterfinals. The San Francisco Shock started off their campaign in these playoffs losing to the Atlanta Reign. Finding themselves in the losers bracket, they quickly regrouped to sweep aside the reigning champions London Spitfire 4-0. San Francisco came into this as favourites but the LA Gladiators are no pushovers so I thought this game would be fairly close. We start out on Busan once again, and the first point was a fairly convincing win for the Shock, but the second was much closer, with the point being flipped several times, but ultimately it is Sinatra on the Sombra, which we don't see much of right now, that put on a great display to take the first map for the Shock. Not the start the Gladiators were looking for. Kings Row was up next, with the Gladiators looking for an instant response. The Shock were looking so good though, and rolled through the first two points. The Gladiators managed to set up a defence on C and run the clock down, but the Shock would finish the map in overtime. The Gladiators have a fairly good attack, taking the first two points, with a good time bank for C, but the Shock whittled down, whittled down the clock just like the Gladiators did. But the difference here is the Shock prevent them from finishing the map, meaning they would go up 2-0 in the series. The Gladiators map pick had not worked. Time for the Horizon Lunar Colony, 
and the gladiators take the first point fairly quickly after the shock's bastion comp crumbles, but the second point is a much trickier proposition. Although the gladiators didn't get the snowball they wanted, they do get both points with 143 in the time bank. Another bastion com comp comes out for the gladiators, this time on the defense. It works better for them than it did for the shock, but ultimately San Francisco would break through and although they would get to the second point with less time on the clock, the snowball was in, fact in effect for the shock and they would finish the map with 3 minutes in the bank after a good stall from LA. Time for the second attack rounds, and this goes much differently compared to the first rounds. The gladiators are held by the shock, unable to even get a tick of progress leaving the door open for the shock to take a 3-0 lead in the series. Do you really think the shock are going to pass on that opportunity? San Francisco's shock get the tick they need and go 3-0 in the series despite desperate times for the gladiators. We go to map 4 and Rialto, a map where hydration can roll out the Farah for something a bit different. The Farah does indeed come out for the gladiators on defense, but a bastion pirate ship attack comes rolling through for the shock and they will get all three points with enormous 342 in the time bank. Outstanding attack from the shock. Could the gladiators match the shock? Well, the pace certainly wasn't there, but not many could match the pace that the shock showed on their attack. The gladiators do finish the map, meaning we go to extra rounds, but the gulf in the time bank is massive. The gladiators don't get the second attack round they are looking for as they fail to get the first point, and now it is do or die. Stop the shock here, or it's home time for LA. The shock look scary. Really scary. They win Rialto and knock out the Gladiators in dominant fashion, setting up a match between them and the Spark as we lose the Gladiators. This honestly wasn't the Gladiators playing badly. It was just a shock playing on another level, showing the anger for revenge they get when they lose like they did in the opening fixture of these playoffs. Moving away from the losers bracket for the only time this week and we take a look at our winners bracket final, which would be between the New York Excelsior and the Vancouver Titans. One would be advancing to the grand final, one would be going down to the loser's bracket to face either the San Francisco Shock or the Hangzhou Spark. Both teams have showed us some great overwatch during these playoffs and it was finally time for them to meet. We go to Li Zhang Tower for our first map and there is nothing else to say but NYXL were ripped apart on this map by Titans. Vancouver looking so good on control with NYXL only able to put up a fight on the second point which was not enough for them to prevent the Titans taking the map 2-0. We go to King's Road next with the NYXL looking for a reply to their loss on the first map. This map is a lot, lot closer than what we saw on control. The NYXL kept chewing away at the time that the Titans had, and with the NYXL able to finish the map initially, they would hold the Titans before point C and win the map 3-2, tying up the series. The Vancouver Titans would take us to Temple of Anubis. The Titans attack started off very poorly, but at the death they do manage to take the first point, but a staunch NYXL defense does manage to prevent the Titans from having any time in the time bank as they take it in overtime, but it could have been a lot, lot worse for Vancouver. The attack round for NYXL goes much, much better than what we saw from the Titans, with them finishing the map with a 4.20 in the time bank. Lit. Did I really just say that? NYXL on the driving seat then, with no attack round for the Titans and a massive time bank for NYXL, it was pretty inevitable that the NYXL would take the map, take map 3, a map which historically the Titans had been very good on and turn the tide in the series going up to one. Now we were asking the question to the Vancouver Titans, did they have the answers to going behind in the series? Well, they believe the answers lied in Gibraltar, and so that is where we went next. They absolutely had the answers. A blistering attack run on Gibraltar saw them finish the map with a huge 337 in the time bank. The pendulum swings to put the pressure on New York. The NYXL make fairly good time on the first two points, but the Titans dig their feet in on the third point and prevent the NYXL from finishing the map. Once again, we have a tied series 2-2 at this point. Now we would head to control for the second time, a map type that Vancouver Titans were very dominant on earlier. Could they win it again and put themselves back in control? Busan it would be, and it was a very similar story to what happened in the very first map of this series, a dominant display for the Vancouver Titans. In fact, it was even more dominant than the first map was. The Titans had flipped everything on its head, taking control of the series and going up 3-2. It was time for the NYXL to pick a map, and they would take us to Numbani, a map which both teams have found success on, but the map that the Titans had lost during these playoffs. Out comes the Bastions, which is custom for Numbani right now. The Titans quickly switch off it though as the NYXL roll through them with the Pirate Ship and Farrah combination. They get a bit stuck at the end of the map, but they would ultimately finish with 225 in the time bank. 
it would take the Titans much longer to take the first point, but they roll through most of the rest of the map and finish with a better time bank than the NYXL. The pressure was really on NYXL here. Remember, if they lose the map, they are going down to the loser's bracket. This is 2019 NYXL though, not the 2018 choking NYXL. A very good attack for the NYXL sees them complete the map for the second time, getting six points on the board. Not only this, though, they managed to full hold the Vancouver Titans, winning them Barney 6-3. Time for a map 7. It would all be decided here. Dorado to give us our answer, and it would go it could go either way. Vancouver Titans have a fairly steady attack as they do manage to complete the map, but they had to do it in overtime. Now the NYXL were really under pressure. They would have to finish the map to keep themselves in the series. It was a lengthy war of attrition in this one. But with Vancouver slowly taking time off the clock for the NYXL, they would ultimately take the series, stopping the NYXL before point B. 4-3 in the end to the Titans, and what a series. It came down to the dominance on control for Vancouver that would give them the win in the series. It was the only map type where you could see a big difference between the teams here, as most of the maps were very, very close otherwise. The Vancouver Titans proceed to become your first team through to the grand final and the winners of the winner's bracket. The NYXL were not out of it though, as they would drop down to the loser's bracket and had a second chance to reach the grand final for a second showdown with the Titans. With the winner's bracket finished, it was time to find out who would be facing the NYXL in the loser's bracket final. Would it be the Hangzhou Spark or the San Francisco Shock? Busan would be our first map and although it would be starting off fairly well for the Spark, with them taking their first point, the Shock are never going down without a fight. The Shock turned the tides on the first map and would win it 2-1 with some really amazing combo play between Smurf on the Orisa and Sinatra on the Doomfist. We would go to King's Row for our second map and the momentum is really with the Shock as they roll through the map finishing with 3.36 in the time bank. The Hangzhou Spark can't match this and they finish the map in overtime, meaning that they would not get another chance to attack. The Shock do manage to complete their second attack putting them up 2-0 in the series. We would go to Temple of Anubis for our third map in the series, and the Spark really needed to find a foothold in the series if they wanted to get anything out of it. The Hangzhou Spark do manage to complete the map with a decent time bank, but the Shock come through once again with a better attack round, giving themselves more time in the bank for their second round. In the second round of attacks, the Spark would be able to finish the map, albeit in overtime. Now, could they hold the Shock and get on, board, get on the board in the series? That would be a no. The Shock pull through once again as the, they finish the map with time to spare. We go to a third round of attacks, and this is where the Spark would come up short. Being unable to get any pro progress on the first point and ultimately unable to hold off the Shock as San Francisco would go up 3-0 in the series and on to match point. Map 4 would be taken by Hangzhou to Dorado. At this point, I don't think it really mattered which map you took it to as the Shock had performed well on all of them all season long. Again. The Spark would come up short on their defence as the Shock would finish the map with 32 seconds in the bank. It was now do or die for the Spark. Finish the map or go home. They finished the map after a hectic final fight with both teams fielding bastions during this one. The Spark stay alive. Just. The Spark would manage a fairly good second attack considering they only had one minute in the time bank being stopped before the second point. Ultimately though, they would not be able to stop the Shock from winning the map 5-4 and getting yet another sweep, knocking the Hangzhou Spark out 4-0. For the Spark, it is a similar story to what I said about the Gladiators. The Shock are scary. Very scary since their defeat against the Atlanta Reign. The Spark have looked very good and didn't look completely outclassed in this match, but the Shock were just so good that they couldn't live with them. The Spark ent exit the competition after a great first season, the San Francisco Shock will face the NYXL for a spot in the grand final against the Vancouver Titans. Okay, last game of the week, the final of the losers bracket, the San Francisco Shock taking on the New York Excelsior for a place in the grand final. Could the NYXL take maps away from a team who has looked seemingly unstoppable since their first game of the playoffs? Our first map would be Li Zhang Tower, and things would start off very well for the NYXL taking the first point in a fairly dominant fashion. But hey, what did I say earlier? The Shock don't go down without a fight. Just like earlier in the week, the Shock would turn the map on its head, winning the next two points, taking Li Zhang Tower 2-1. A bad start for the NYXL, but plenty of time left in the match to turn things around. Next, we would go to King's Row, where things got very, 
very close between these two teams, as the NYXL would prevent the shock from finishing the map, stopping them just before the third point. But unfortunately for the NYXL, that bit of clutch would come out once again for the shock as they would be able to just about hold the Excelsior before they could reach that box of victory. The shock will go up 2-0 in the series. It was time for the New York Excelsior to step up and try and get something on the board to build from. NYXL would go to Temple of Anubis to try and find that platform to build from, and this one would be a long, long map. Both teams managed to get through two attack rounds each, but it would be the NYXL to buckle first and not be able to capture the second point on their third attack. Could the shock capitalize on their advantage? Well, this is the shock we're talking about. Of course they could. They would win the map 6-5 and put themselves on match point in the series. I have said this a lot during this video, but again, it's do or die time. The NYXL would have to win this next map to stay in the series and the playoffs. We go to Rialto for our fourth map, and things do not start off well for the NYXL, as they get rolled by the shot. San Francisco finished the map with a massive time bank. All the pressure was on NYXL now. With Flower just coming into the team for this map, it was to Sebi Obi to show his fantastic worth to this team, as he was able to calm everyone down, steady the ship, and lead the NYXL to a valiant attack, which would see them get two points, but ultimately failed to get the third. The NYXL would be our third place team this season, but failed to make it to the grand final. The story is much the same for as it was for all of the other matches we have seen from the shock in the losers bracket. They were just too good. This was some of the best Overwatch I have ever seen the NYXL play. But unfortunately at this point in time, the shock are just that bit better. Now, I don't care what some people might say. Despite their failure to reach the grand final, NYXL have greatly improved this season. They have put up a very good display in the playoffs, which historically has been a problem for them, and they are not far from the top two. Talking about our top two, it would be the San Francisco Shock who would advance to the grand final to set up a match that a lot of people have predicted would be our grand final at the start of the season. It will be the Vancouver Titans taking on the San Francisco Shock for the ultimate prize in Overwatch. Something to highlight is that since the Shock lost to the Rain in their first match of these playoffs, they have not dropped a single map. The Titans will need to change this if they want to win. Now... I will do an entire preview for the grand final in another video, but it should be a cracker. But there is one last thing to do in this video. That is to give a fond farewell to the Blizzard Arena. The losers bracket final was the last match to be played there as the Overwatch League will go on the road for the entirety of the 2020 season onwards. It has been home to some of the greatest and most innovative moments in esports history. Our first match there was on December the 6th, 2017 in the preseason of the inaugural season, where we saw the Florida Mayhem lose 3-1 to a vastly different San Francisco Shock team. But since then, it has seen some massive upsets, six different stage champions, 20 teams, a winless season, multiple unbeaten stages, several team transformations, and one league champion. That big screen was one of the most recognizable things in esports and blew me away for the first time I saw it on the broadcast. And it is a real shame that I, alongside many other people, never got to see it in person. We move on to a brave new structure next season, but we will never forget the Blizzard Arena and all the highs and lows we saw over the past two years. Okay, so that runs it off for our playoffs. There is one match left to decide it all, and I will be back for the preview of that one very soon. This has been a bit long, but hey, it's our finale of the playoffs. I will be back for our last preview very soon, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. See you then.